Let's move on to um, Brian White from the Jackson Lab. Um, he actually was the manager, when he was at Sage Bio Networks, he was the manager um, of the tumor deconvolution dream challenge that our first speaker was the winner of. Um, he's going to discuss the CyberSort X deconvolution algorithm, um, which was the sort of baseline method used in that challenge. Peter Mestoff uh, discussed it a little bit yesterday. Thanks, Roger. Thanks for the introduction and thanks for inviting me. Uh, I've learned a lot from your workshop the, over the, the past day. Um, so Roger already gave you a, a brief background of what I'll be discussing today. It's particularly um, nice to share a session with uh, Rongshan, who is the winner of, uh, of the Dream Challenge. And this is work that um, I undertook while I was at, at Sage Bio Networks. So our focus is on, I hope you can't see my, sorry. The zooming this here. So our focus has been on the deconvolution of immune cells within the tumor microenvironment. And there the complex milieu of immune cells with stromal and cancer cells has been implicated in patient survival and, and therapeutic uh, outcome. So the field has, has been greatly interested in using deconvolution methods to predict levels of immune cells from the wealth of bulk gene expression data that have already been generated. Um, so for example, uh, as of yesterday, there are over 4 million samples uh, bulk expression samples in GEO. And both Alex and Rongchang have, have already alluded to this. You know, over the past four or five years, there's been a, a great explosion. Um, my count is a little bit lower. I'm about 20, but this is just talking about expression-based deconvolution methods in the, in the cancer setting. So we set out to provide an unbiased evaluation um, of them um, by launching this tumor immune deconvolution dream challenge. And in this challenge, we asked participants to predict up to 14 different immune and stromal populations. And I've highlighted them here on the myopoietic hierarchy. Um, as Rongshan mentioned, um, and I'll get to a little bit later, um, we divided them into coarse grained and, and fine grained cell types. So fine grained is predicting all, all 14, and this would include things like um, naive and memory and regulatory um, CD4 T cells, whereas coarse grained would just lump them all together into to CD4 T cells. And similarly for CD8s and, and for B cells, not differentiating between uh, naive and memory. So we hoped both to disper, uh, spur development of, of novel methods and also evaluate uh, seven baseline methods. And this included both CyberSort, um, the predecessor of CyberSort X and, and CyberSort X itself. Um, and Alex just made the distinction and also made the distinction yesterday of reference-based versus reference-free approaches. Um, so all of the baselines that we use, and to my knowledge, all of the participant methods uh, were reference-based, um, though we didn't uh, implicitly mandate that they, that they be so. So that will be my, my focus here. Um, this challenge was ongoing for quite some time. And in the meantime, you know, others have, have benchmarked deconvolution methods. Uh, Peter mentioned his, his own group yesterday. Um, I would like to acknowledge this work from Sturm and colleagues, um, including Florent de Perez, uh, who assisted us in, in our own efforts. Um, these authors differentiate between two broad classes of methods that I'd also like to highlight, um, deconvolution-based and marker gene-based. Both classes begin with expression of purified samples, for example, facts sorted. Deconvolution approaches, including CyberSort X and CyberSort, then define expression profiles for cell types of interest. For example, here I'm showing B cells, cytotoxic T cells, and, and NK cells. And generally, these profiles include only genes that are differentially expressed across cell types. These profiles are often combined into a signature matrix, as is you know, techno, uh, the terminology that others used uh, yesterday. And then we can look at bulk expression of an admixture of cells and describe them as a linear combination of these profiles, where the coefficients of the combination are the proportions of the corresponding cell types. And they are often, though not always, um, constrained to be positive and some to one that is you know, true proportions. Um, and then um, insofar as they are proportions, they, they can be compared to the known proportions, um, you know, the ground truth proportions, either across samples for a given cell type or across cell types for a particular sample. The second major class of approaches are marker gene-based approaches. And these also begin with expression profiles of purified cell types. Um, and throughout this, I'll be using MCP counter as an exemplar of, of this class. So as again, uh, as before I'm showing um, several samples of purified B cells, CD8, uh, T cells, and, and NK cells. And again, uh, these methods tend to perform differential expression analysis, certainly MCP counter does, across the purified um, samples to define, you know, in this first case, B cell markers, and then similarly for, for the other markers. 
Then when presented with a bulk or admix sample A, MCP counter defines a B cell score simply as the summary of the B cell markers in that sample A. Um, and and in, that, in the case of MCP counter, that summary is simply the mean uh, expression within, within the gene set. Uh, though other methods can summarize the gene sets differently, for example, using single sample gene set enrichment analysis. We can then compute this uh, score across the admixtures, but notice now that the scores are on an arbitrary scale, whatever the, the, the scale of your uh, gene expression is, and hence they can only be applied across samples, not across cell types. And so we wanted to accommodate both these broad classes of approaches. Um, so we kind of went for the, the, the least common denominator um, and uh, compared predictions across samples so that, so we, so that um, approaches like MCP counter would, would still be um, amenable to our, to our setup. Um, so here um, I, I, I'm showing uh, the, you know, the kind of um, comparison against ground truth that we, that we envisioned and we executed. Here I'm showing uh, CyberSort X predictions of CD4 levels on the y-axis against ground truth on the x-axis with each dot being a sample. And so of course, this is amenable to um, correlation um, metrics and, and that's what we use to, to evaluate them. Pearson correlation is our primary metric and Spearman is our secondary metric in the case of, of ties. A, bit, a little bit of challenge logistics. Um, our challenge consisted of three phases. In the first open phase, methods were trained on publicly available transcriptomic profiles, whatever they could find. Uh, you, you saw from Mongshan that many teams invested considerable effort in, in digging up um, uh, uh, um, you know, relevant uh, data sets from, um, from the literature. Uh, during the second leaderboard phase, methods were submitted, assessed, and, re and revised potentially using bulk expression data with, with ground truth. But it wasn't until the final validation phase when final submissions were uh, assessed using expression profiles of known admixtures that we had generated specifically for this challenge. And that's when they received their, their final scores. And we allowed up to three submissions during during that validation phase. Participants submitted their methods as Docklord modules, which were executed uh, against data that were sequestered in the cloud. And doing so using this model to data paradigm prevents biases due to overfitting since the participants never actually directly access the validation data. We generated ground truth validation admixtures by purchasing immune cells from healthy donors. We extracted RNA from the cells and mixed the RNA in proportions to form an in vitro admixture. We then repeated this 100 or so times, 96 times from 96 well plate, sequenced them, pseudo aligned and quantified them to get an expression matrix, which we could then feed into these deconvolution methods um, and then compare their predictions to the ground truth that were provided by the known mixing ratios that were used to generate the, the admixtures. Okay, as I mentioned, CyberSort and CyberSort X were two of the seven baseline methods um, all published that we used as comparators for the participant submitted methods. Now I'll spend a few slides on CyberSort um, because its prediction engine is really the basis of, of CyberSort X. Um, both are deconvolution based, um, as, as I uh, already mentioned. And um, the authors profiled cell types, um, prof uh, sorry, purified cell types, profiled them, and defined a signature matrix, much as I described earlier. CyberSort then defines the fraction of each cell type by applying support vector regression uh, to the signature matrix and an input profile uh, to be deconvolved. Now, by default, CyberSort predicts relative fractions, that is, um, fractions that sum to one across all and only those cell types that were represented in the, the signature matrix. And this is a point that, that Peter made yesterday, uh, yesterday in emphasizing the importance of having a complete signature that, uh, that represents all cell types within your sample. Now, CyberSort um, also outputs you know, uh, in, a, in a separate mode, um, what it calls absolute fractions, which are intended to reflect the absolute proportion of each cell type uh, in each sample. Um, now, unfortunately, I won't be talking about that today. The default is to use relative fractions, and, and that's what we use for both CyberSort and CyberSort X in, in our challenge. The CyberSort so-called LM22 signature matrix was defined from 22 leukocyte populations. They were isolated from the peripheral blood or bone marrow of healthy donors. It consists of about 550 genes that were differentially expressed between one site, cell type and all others. And as you'll see in a moment, CyberSort X outperformed CyberSort in our challenge. Um, one difference between the two approaches is that when applying CyberSort X, we applied a two-stage deconvolution. In the first stage, we applied a signature matrix that differentiates between epithelial, endothelial, fibroblasts, and immune cells. 
Um, this matrix was derived by fax purifying uh, these populations from four lung cancer patients. And this was part of the, the CyberSwordX manuscript in 2019. In the second step, we further deconvolved that immune component, um, one of the four components, uh, into 22 populations that are represented in the LM22 matrix. This is the same matrix that's used in CyberSort and that was published in their original 2016 manuscript. So I want to emphasize here that we didn't do any retraining of either of these methods. A second major difference is the batch correction that's applied by CyberSort X, which is intended to combat cross-platform differences. Um, so for example, in the manuscript, they look at five prime and three prime biases. Um, there are several features of CyberSort X that we did not use in this challenge. These include an ability to predict expression profiles of the individual cell types within the input data and to define signature matrix, matrices from, from the single cell data. We defined an aggregate score as the mean correlation over cell types. And to get a sense of the variance of the methods, we bootstrapped the predictions and then compared the distributions of these scores across methods. We allowed participants three submissions, as I, as I mentioned, and following the first, we found that CyberSort X performed best using our primary Pearson-based correlation matrix, matrix, uh, metric, sorry, in this so-called coarse grain uh, sub-challenge that I mentioned previously. Um, now, in fairness to Rongchen and, and others, um, we did allow participants these three submissions. So at the final submission, Adgenome XMU, the method that Rongchen described, uh, was statistically tied with CyberSort X using the primary metric, though CyberSort X actually ed edged out using our secondary uh, Spearman-based correlation. Um, and I'll just note that in the, the fine grain challenge, uh, ex Exonome XMU was the clear winner, and CyberSort X was not even evaluated because it didn't provide predictions for all cell types in the, the fine grain sub-challenge. Nevertheless, we can look at its performance on the individual cell types that it did predict. And so here I'm showing the, the baseline comparator methods and the top participant methods as the rows uh, with the Pearson correlation on the x-axis for the indicated cell type. And notice that the cell types are ordered from those with highest mean correlation across all methods uh, in the top left, uh, um, that's neutrophils, to those with worst mean correlation uh, in the bottom right, and that's memory CD4 T cells. And here I'm highlighting CyberSort, CyberSort X and Adgenome XMU. And from this, you can see that with the possible exception of CyberSort and CyberSort X uh, with, um, on regulatory T cells, all of these three methods do well relative to other methods across all the cell types. So the performance is, is uniformly uh, strong across these different cell types. Um, in the post-competitive phase, we're also assessing each method's specificity and sensitivity. And here, Roger, allud alluding to one of your uh, earlier questions, we, we did use in silico uh, admixtures uh, created from the, the purified expression profiles. Our approach to assessing the specificity quantifies the prediction of a cell type X in a sample only containing a different cell type Y. So I'm trying to kind of show you that here schematically in this heat map, where the rows are the purified samples. For example, here I'm highlighting a memory CD8 T cell sample. And then the columns are the predicted cell type, where here I've highlighted CD4 predictions. And so the intersection of those two then is giving us the CD4 T cell prediction for a sample that contains only memory CD8 T cells um, for a particular uh, method um, called EPIC. So here it claims that the CD8 T cell sample is actually comprised of more CD4 T cells than it is CD8 T cells. All three of Axonome XMU and the two CyberSort methods had relatively high specificity, which can be seen here for the individual cell types in the coarse grain challenge, um, in particular by the, the presence of the kind of the strong diagonal where I've ordered both the rows and the columns can consistently with, with one another. And now you can see the aggregate uh, performance here across all cell types. And again, note that CyberSort X and Adgenome XMU are, are near the top. So we also uh, assess sensitivity. Um, I'm getting a little, uh, a little late here, so I will, I will skip past this. Um, but, but note that again, CyberSort X and Adgenome seem to perform uh, quite well. Um, though I, I should say quite well relative to others. I think we were a little surprised that in general, the limit of detection seemed to be quite high. So in the worst case for CD4 T cells, for example, the best performing method um, required that 6% of, of the population of, of, of the cells be CD4 T cells but before it could detect them above, above background. And actually, adgenome, uh, that was achieved by adgenome of CyberSort X um, was considerably higher at, at 11%. Um, the, the best performing cell types, again, neutrophils, um, and, and their limited detection was about 0.2%. So by way of, of summarizing, I'd like to conclude 
by acknowledging my colleagues, uh, former colleagues at SAGE, in particular, Andrew Lamb, uh, who um, was uh, responsible for setting up and executing the, the challenge infrastructure. And then on the right, I've listed the steering committee members. I think we've, we've benefited from, from different uh, differing opinions and, and only uh, rarely shouting voices on the committee. Uh, so we had representation from two competing methods, Andrew Gentles and Aaron Newman co-developed CyberSort at Stanford and Aurelian and Florent in Paris uh, co-developed MCP counter. And we also benefited greatly from um, Laura Heiser at OHSU who was a Dream Challenge director and, and Josh generally uh, the smart guy. So I look forward to taking uh, some of your questions during the, the later Q&A session. Thanks.